God is good all the time. Amen. Um, God is good, and it is good to be together with you in worship in this Memorial Day weekend. As um, we're gathered here for worship, I want to just let you know that wherever you might be, um, we're delighted. I'm, I'm learning uh, of, of different folks that are watching kind of all over the place, uh, a little bit here and there, and um, it's really heartwarming, and I want to um, you know, thank you for, um, for letting us know um, how these services are, are touching you. And um, talking to the Maddies as, as one, of those, one of those groups. Marilyn, thank you for your, uh, your note the other day. It was really, really special. Um, but also, I know there, there are others as well. So welcome, and we're glad that you're a part of things with us today. Um, just a, a couple of announcements. And again, wherever you are, it's really more for people that are, I suppose, that are local, but wherever you are, if you want to be part of our Wednesday Bible study, um, we are continuing our look at the, the seven marks of a vital congregation. We're up to mark number um, five I th- or six in our Bible study. Uh, this week we'll be talking about caring relationships, so a little further deep dive into the scripture we're looking at today. So that's Wednesday evening from 7 till 8.30. We can get information to you. You can contact us and we'll get you the, the Zoom link if you'd like to. A reminder that um, all of these things uh, that we have going on in the life of the church are made available for our e-news, so you'll want to take a look at that and see what's happening in the coming weeks, Um, especially as we think about communion here in a couple weeks, Pentecost, so we celebrate this coming Sunday, and a special graduation event we have for our high school seniors. As we prepare ourselves for worship, let us uh, hear these words from Psalm 111, Selected Readings. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of honor and majesty is His work, and His righteousness endures forever. He sent redemption to His people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Amen. Boy, I'd like to welcome you this morning. Sunday, May 24th, week 7, 8, whatever it is. <laughs> but it's Memorial Day weekend. It's our weekend to remember, to remember those that keep us free, those that have gone before us. And let's remember the God that made us, the God that walks with us, the God that sustains us, that keeps us safe. And let's start by singing, How Awesome Is Our God? How awesome is our God, how high do eagles soar, how majestic are the mountain tops, how loud the oceans roar. How awesome is our God, how high do eagles soar, how majestic are the mountain tops, how loud the oceans roar. The rocks and the trees and the hills cry out, the sand and the sea proclaim. All creation joins to shout the glory of His His name. How awesome is our God, how high do eagles soar. How majestic are the mountain tops, how loud the oceans roar. For God so loved this world, He gave His one and only Son. With his awesome love, he came to save us, each and every one. How awesome is our God, how high do eagles soar. How majestic are the mountain tops, how loud the oceans roar. How awesome is our God, how high do eagles soar. How majestic are the mountain tops, how loud the oceans roar. 
Amen. That's awesome. How deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that He should give His only Son to make a wretch His treasure. How great the pain of searing loss, the Father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one bring many sons to glory. Behold the man upon the cross, my sin upon his shoulders ashamed I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers it was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished his dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. I will not boast in anything, no gifts, no power, no wisdom, but I will boast. Jesus Christ, His death and resurrection. Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawn. Time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger, your name is great and your heart is kind, for all your goodness I will keep on. 
on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. It's the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before. So we'll sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name, Lord, I worship your holy name, Lord, I'll worship your holy name. God is light. In God, there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with Christ while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light, as Christ himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. With confidence in God's forgiveness, then, let us confess our sins first silently. And now together, using the unison prayer printed at the bottom of your screen at home. Gracious God, we find ourselves in circumstances we have not chosen, and we scurry to find any sense of normalcy. We know that you are the rock, yet we lean on other foundations. We know that you are sovereign, but we seek security in our own control. We know that you give comfort, but we elevate comforts of our own design. We know that you satisfy, but we keep scrolling. We know that you set us free, but addictions grip us tightly. We know that you call us to rest, but we keep struggling. By grace, forgive us. In mercy, meet us. By your Holy Spirit, equip us to walk in the newness of life with Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ and Christ died for us, Christ rose for us, Christ reigns in power for us, Christ prays for us. Friends, believe in the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Please take a moment to pass this peace of Christ to those with you in your home. You may also extend this peace to others through prayer.
The first scripture reading for today is from Psalm 66, verses 1 through 9, which can be found in the Old Testament portion of your Bible. Make a joyful noise to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Because of your great power, your enemies cringe before you. All the earth worships you. They sing praises to you, sing praises to your name. Come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds among mortals. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the river on foot. There we rejoiced in him, who rules by his might forever, whose eyes keep watch on the nations. Let the rebellious not exalt themselves. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard, who has kept us among the living and has not let our feet slip. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now, all the way from Iowa, Marina Paul will lead the time for young disciples. Good morning. Welcome to our Time for Young Disciples. My name is Marina, and these are my friends Darren, David, Jason, and Gigi, and they're going to help me tell a little story today. So we're talking about what we plant and what we harvest. So harvest means what plants we get when we plant things. So if we plant good things in our lives, like being kind to others, or what are some other good things that we can plant, you guys? Um, um, helping people. Helping people. Um, um, being give, nice to people. Being nice to people. Giving money to charity and to people who need it. Yeah, giving money to charity and to people who need it, so being generous. Or things like being patient or being nice to our brothers and sisters and to our moms and dads. Those are good things, and when we plant those good things, then we get happy flowers, right? We get happy plants that are full of blessings. That's what it says on our leaf here. So when we plant good things in our lives and we're nice to others, then good things come our way because we're making God happy. But if we're planting not so good things, like if we're being mean to our friends or to our siblings, or what are some other not so good things that we could plant? Robbing. 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 Chilling. Well, that is a bad yeah, thing. Yeah, that is a bad thing. Or when, if we're not being patient, we're not listening to our moms and dads. Those are some not good things. And what might we get if we plant those things in our lives? We might get a sad flower or not so good things coming our way. Because those things don't make God happy. So the Bible tells us in Galatians to not grow tired of doing good works. So when we do good works, then we get our happy flowers in our lives and we get lots of blessings from God. Can we all pray together? This is a repeat after me prayer, so you can pray along with us. Dear God, Dear God, God thank, you thank you for this day. Thank you for this day. Help us to plant good things. Help us to plant good, good, good things, things in our lives. In our lives. Every day. Every day. Every day. Amen. 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 Thank you all. Our second scripture lesson this morning is found in Galatians chapter 6. Here the Apostle Paul writes, My friends, if anyone is detected in a transgression, you who have received the Spirit should restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Take care that you yourselves are not tempted. Bear one another's burdens. And in this way, you fulfill the law of Christ. For if those who are nothing think they are something, they deceive themselves. All must test their own work. Then that work, rather than their neighbor's work, will become a cause for pride. For all must carry their own loads. Those who are taught the word must share in all good things with their teacher. Do not deceive or do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for you reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap eternal life from the Spirit. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then, 
whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of faith. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, we pray your blessing upon this reading and your blessing upon us as we approach your word. May it nurture and sustain us, bless us, and guide us. Lord, grant that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts would be holy and acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Come to me, you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I wanted to share that message with you from Matthew chapter 11, of course, the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. I wanted to share it with you because I felt like um, it might be a, a blessing to you, and it certainly was a blessing to me, something that I needed to hear for myself. As the stay at home and stay safe protocols remain in effect here and many places across the country, the coronavirus continues to claim lives at an alarming rate. It's likely to be over 100,000 deaths in the United States before Memorial Day weekend ends. And the stresses are mounting. Social distancing is, uh, is a strain, and there we see debates and things played out about wearing masks. The isolation is taking a toll, especially as it impacts the elderly and the infirmed, and even the things that help connect us through technology and so forth are, are proving for some um, an insurmountable barrier or an extreme stress as they, they try to incorporate some of these things to, to be com- connected with others. And every day we see across the, the news, it's, it's played out this sort of amp, amping up of, of every little thing. Um, it, all these controversies are, are, are just... Um, built up before us, and even watching the news is a cause of more and more stress. And we know that tens of millions of people in our country are out of work. And quite frankly, there is an added stress for us in church leadership as we consider how it is that we are going to reopen the church and keep people safe as we are working on plans for just that. It could be by, by midsummer, for instance, in in, in our state, we will reach phase three, which would allow gatherings of up to 50 people. And we were just measuring out in the sanctuary here to figure out, well, how many people could we sit, seat safely in such a circumstance? Before the pandemic, you know, could you ever imagine the idea of social distancing? When was the last time you had a conversation with somebody and you maintained six feet of distance with them? And, and that distance didn't involve like something in between you, like a fence or something like that. But such is the world that we live in right now. And it feels, at least to me, like the weight of all of these things just grows bit by bit by bit. But isn't it good? Isn't it good that we worship a God, a risen Savior, in whom we can find rest when those burdens seem so heavy. A Savior who invites us to share these burdens, to find our rest in Him, who promises that His yoke is light. And that image of a yoke is not just about the extent of what He would ask of us when we think of His burden is light, that it's not too too much for us to carry. But if you think about a yoke and having animals yoked together like oxen, There's the fact that when we share in the yoke of Jesus Christ, He is beside us every step of the way. And that's something that we have to remember during these troubling times. So it's with this in mind, of sharing the yoke of Christ and 
and uh, a Lord that, that accepts our burdens and in whom we can find rest, we examine the sixth mark of a vital congregation, caring relationships. And to explore this, we take a look at the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Galatians. He provides us a Christian perspective on caring for one another and engaging in caring relationships. And I should probably say that there's nothing particularly special or unique about bearing one another's burdens, except that we have a particular perspective. So Christians don't, we don't have the corner on the market of caring relationships, but we understand that in Jesus Christ, there is a deeper perspective when we share His love with others, when we support others and bear others' burdens, that caring for one another is fulfilling the law of Christ, as Paul says. Bearing one another's burdens is a reflection of our Savior who calls the weary and the heavy laden to come to Him so that they can find rest. In exploring caring relationships in the framework of vital congregations, there is a distinction, um, as with each of these marks of the church, uh, there's a distinction between what is, is a, a deeper sense, in this case, of a caring relationship versus just sort of being a friendly place or a superficial kind of relationship, the facade of friendliness that we might experience, or we might just expect if it was just something like a social club that the church is distinct from this, that the relationships that we have, that we are called to by God, are of a much, much greater depth. And we see that depth presented in Paul's message about bearing the burdens of others. Bearing burdens is a, is a personal act, and it's an act of, of taking up that yoke and walking with someone else. And to do that involves a level of vulnerability on our part. For instance, of sharing the burden and offering somebody else is, is, a, is a vulnerable act to, just to share of ourselves and offer ourselves, not knowing if the gifts that we bring are really going to be enough. And there's a vulnerability, certainly, to ask for and to receive help from others. It's incredibly difficult. And there's a humility that that understanding the, the work of bearing one another's burdens, well, this is the work of Christ. True caring is only possible through Jesus. He is the healer. He is the one who brings the shalom, but we are the vehicles that convey it. Kenneth Houck, in his uh, work developing Stephen Ministry and talking about caring Christian relationships um, and caregiving relationships, he has this to say. He says that we are the caregivers, but God is the cure giver. That's sort of the mantra of Stephen Ministry. Stephen ministers are the caregivers, but God is the cure giver. And as stewards of the gospel, nurturing caring relationships in Jesus Christ is essential, essential to our faith. When we give our lives to Christ, we make a commitment to a life of covenant living with others, to extending hospitality to, to, to people um, on, on the inside of the community of faith and those, of course, on the outside as well. We commit ourselves to worship and to study, to pray, and to serve with one another. All of these things cannot happen unless the relationships are of this deeper level. This is the essence of bearing one another's burdens. But if you look at the passage, there is another component that has always thrown me off a little bit, and maybe you caught this. There's a, a paradox. Paul says, on the one hand, we must bear one another's burdens, but later he says, we must also carry our own load. So how do we understand these two things, perhaps to reconcile them? Well, to carry our own load, I think, does not mean that we should suck up and, and suck it up and, and do everything on our, on our own, right? To never ask for any sort of help from anyone else. No, I think carrying our own load means taking on the yoke of Christ, committing ourselves to Him and to one another. 
when we're not able to bear as much, he takes that load and he makes the burden for us even lighter, just as we might want to do and would do for someone else to help them or that someone might do in helping us. Carrying our own load means reflecting on our own lives and our own motivations. Part of the, one aspect of a caring relationship might be calling to someone else to task for something that they're doing, but doing that in a way to restore them, not to punish them. Carrying our own loads means sowing seeds of compassion and mercy and service, sowing them, as Paul writes, to the Spirit. We do this in our relationships within the church family, and we do this in our relationships that we extend to people beyond the church family. Carrying our own load means offering ourselves to Jesus Christ, who alone will guide us, who will share with us, and in whom we receive his love. So the reason we talk about carrying relationships um, in the context of the vital congregations so that we can, um, we can reflect on how we experience caring relationships here at FBCPA. Now, as soon as I say that, I think it's a fair question to ask, where is here right now? I shared as we were preparing uh, for the, the sermon how um, challenging this, this message is for me Um, to think about caring relationships when I'm not looking out at the people that we care about so much. But right now, we are the church in diaspora. We're scattered across the land, unable to meet in person, and yet held together by the Holy Spirit, held together through technology and and the the miracle of uh, the Internet and things that, that can bring good to the world, I suppose, as much as it can bring harm but held together even more so by the relationships that are formed here in this place. Not necessarily a physical place, but the place of the gathered community in Christ. And even though we are physically separated, it's the Spirit that holds that connection together. I believe that there is a special opportunity for us to reflect on caring relationships, a special opportunity. Maybe we have to work a little bit harder now that we don't have, you know, just the convenience of gathering together in one place at a particular time and what have you. I think there is a seedbed for creative expressions of connectivity, and we hope and pray, of course, that they're not things that we have to do forever, but they are things that we do for a season that will strengthen us. And that bearing one another's burdens is like planting seeds of grace in the world. God is sowing something among us right now and something in our world. As hard as as it is to believe, you know, the Christian church has always found a way to thrive in times of turmoil, whether that was persecution in the early church or pandemic in the present church. And this message is not just for us, but it is for the world. This week, um, as has seemed to happen in in these weeks of of being separated, uh, there are these moments where I experience God is just kind of communicating uh, God's presence, um, and in this case, Uh, showing me how the caring relationships within this community of faith are being played out. Uh, As I've talked to some of you, um, you know, on the phone or on Zoom, uh, I I see the the ways that you're connecting, you know, with one another, uh, the extra effort that you're making to make sure that that people um, within our our community uh, know that they are are loved, that that God is is with us. and I want to thank you for that, and thank you for, for your prayers. Uh, as hard as all of this stuff has been, I think it's an enriching for the prayer life of the church and the concerns that we share with one another we'll be praying about a little bit later. So God is doing a good thing, helping carry the burden. I mean, imagine if, if we had to carry this 
on our own? Who among us could walk? But God is present. We see it in the relationships that are still still going strong. We see it also in the strain as we miss one another. But let us hear these words from Paul and find our strength. Let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, especially for those of the family of faith. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, sustain us in these days by the very loving and caring relationships that we have formed among your people here in this place and across the church of Jesus Christ. And as we continue to find ways to to connect with one another um, in prayer and calls and whatever it might be, may the relationships that we nurture and maintain help to sow the seeds of your love, your compassion, and your presence in this world and in this, this time of such uncertainty. And may these seeds sprout forth in hope. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This is the time of year that normally we would be um, making plans for our young people to head off to summer camps um, like Tall Timber, which is one of our Presbytery's mission partners. But this is a different year, and um, we have a minute for ministry or a minute for mission about 
tall timber. And uh, to help with that, we're bringing in Sadie Miller, who will join us via Zoom. So um, I won't say anything more. I'll let you watch it. And, and um, please uh, consider uh, the message that's here and how that might be an opportunity for you to help bear the burden of the camp and the campers um, in the future. So Sadie, tell us what your plans are for the summer. Well, I was gonna go to Tall Timber and play in a mud pit and maybe do some tug of war and go zip lining. But because of COVID-19, I can't do that. Do you know about next summer? Well, that's a good question. Um, they're not sure if they're gonna have any campers there this summer at all. And uh, the camp's actually in pretty deep financial trouble. They're not sure, um, unless they get money, whether they're gonna be able to be open for camp next year. What do you think about that? Um, that's a little scary because I was really looking forward to that. Is there anything we can do? Well, you know, there is actually. Um, our session talked about it the other night and we voted to send $5,000 to Tall Timber um, and invite people in the congregation if they wanna help out as well. Yes, that's a great idea. Well, I'm, I'm hoping that that money will, uh, will, will help keep them afloat through this really difficult time and be able to send kids like you back there uh, next year. Yes. So people, if they want, they can send checks directly to the camp um, or they can contact the church or send it to the church and we'll include that with the money that we're going to be sending uh, as well. So, um, Obviously, you went, you went to Tall Timber last year. Tell people what the experience was like. Um, it was amazing, and it built my faith with God. And uh, all the people were amazing, and I made so many friends, and everyone was really nice, and the food was great, too. <laughs> um, and we did a lot, lots of outdoor activities. We went for hikes and... I went on a mountain bike for the first time, and that was really fun. And it was an overall amazing experience. Well, um, we hope to make that possible for kids next year. Um, Sadie, can I ask, would you mind offering a prayer for, for the camp? Not at all. Dear Jesus, please help Tall Timber to get through this hard time. And um, next year, kids to be able to go and have an amazing time like I did last year. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Sadie. During this time, when we are all worshiping in our own homes, please keep in mind that the work of the church continues. You can mail in your tithes and offerings to First Presbyterian Church at 139 West 8th Street, Port Angeles, Washington, 98362. Let us pray. As we offer our treasure and hearts to you, O God, may they be used to pass on the promise of hope, of peace, of life, of community to all in need of your gifts and presence in their lives. With gladness, let us present an offering of our life and labor to the Lord. Let us pray. Generous God, over and over, your grace sustains us, your love provides for us, and your arm steadies us. We give you these gifts with gratitude and joy. 
thankful you are God over all. Amen. As I mentioned earlier, <clears throat> um, I think there is great potential for this to be an enriching time for us in our prayer lives um, as uh, we, we find um, that is a, maybe a richer source of being connected with one another. So in that spirit, um, let us approach uh, the throne of God and offer our prayers um, to the Lord, um, the ones that have been shared with us. And again, if you have prayer requests uh, for us, please contact, the, contact us. You can find our website. Um, on, you can find us online and, and email us through our website, and we'd be happy to include your prayers. Let us pray. Lord, as we come to you in prayer, we take up the yoke of Christ um, and we feel his strength um, helping us so that we can focus on the burdens that we are bringing to you, the burdens of prayer for ourselves, for our loved ones, for our community, and for the world. So we thank you for sharing in this burden and inviting us to come and pray. We thank you that, that you hear us and that you speak. And so as we pray, may we also hear your voice. Lord God, we begin in praying for the world and lifting uh, to you the, the burdens borne by people across the planet of being... Um, being at home or of schools that are closed uh, throughout the world, um, lives turned upside down, um, countless people who are uh, out of work and in financial and physical distress because of this pandemic. On some level, we're grateful that we cannot understand the magnitude of all of these things, so that burden would, would certainly be a crushing one upon us. But we're grateful, God, that it is not a burden too great for you. Help us, Lord, and open our eyes to see the needs that are in the world and the ways that we can help. Help us to know when we can ask the help of others. For the burden that we might have might be an easy one for someone else to carry and vice versa. We pray for the people of India and Burma who um, have experienced uh, the, the effects of Typhoon Amphan and we, we know that there are dozens uh, who've died and many more who um, had, had, had their, their lives really torn apart. We pray that in relief and recovery efforts that go on there, uh, that they can be done safely so that there is no um, greater risk of spread of the, uh, of the coronavirus. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Pakistan, uh, word of a uh, plane that crashed there. And, um, and dozens who have likely died in that plane crash. We pray for their families, that you would bring comfort and peace, presence to them. We pray for people closer uh, to home. Uh, we ask prayers for Alicia and her family. Um, and we, uh, we also want to lift up uh, Ed and Glenda as uh, they all remember uh, Rebecca um, over the course of this weekend, um, and they remember her and, and mourn her loss. We know that for this group who would be gathering as they've done for decades um, over on the coast, uh, they won't be going um, and celebrating Memorial Day together this year. But may this time be a time of, of reflection, uh, a time of peace, and an unexpected blessing as they remember, remember Rebecca. We pray, uh, Lord, a, a prayer, prayers of thanksgiving for, um, for Sherry and Kathy and their mom, Catherine, on the news that uh, her condition showed some improvement in, um, in the last day. And we ask, God, that you will continue to bless them and guide them uh, along this path of caring for Catherine. We pray travel mercies for Fred and Megan who are returning to Alaska for the summer. Uh, may you guide them safely as they uh, journey northward. 
continue to pray for the Chapman son Cameron and um, for medical, uh, medical tests and the results from those tests. We do give thanks, God, for um, successful pacemaker replacement for Mike, and we um, uh, share in this blessing with uh, Susan. Uh, just grateful that he is doing well. We're grateful for uh, the work that Jim has been able to receive and for his, uh, his dental care, and we continue to pray for him and the, um, the visits that he'll have in the coming weeks uh, to um, get his dentures replaced. We lift the people who are um, in isolation, and um, we pray for our elderly, uh, for, our, for our parents and, um, and loved ones who um, are you know, forced for their own, own good just to, to be in, in this place of isolation. Um, help us, God, in the, the bonds of the Spirit to, uh, to communicate and, and share our love and our concern for one another. We do pray for the needs of the world. Um, we, we think of our local businesses and business owners. Uh, we think of the people that work there, and, um, the folks that are, uh, are, are at home and, and not able to work. We pray that we can move safely through the phases um, of, of reopening um, in our society um, and, and in our church as well guide our leaders as we consider what that will look like for us to come back together and how we can do that safely. We continue to pray for healthcare workers and other essential workers that you would watch over them as they care for us and provide services that are so um, critical for our daily lives. May we all, in um, interacting with essential workers um, as we go out in public, do so with a a spirit of gratitude and humility and grace um, as we undertake different restrictions that, um, that we find a hassle at times. Um, help us remember that um, for the folks that we encounter, they, they have to, to, to go through this through an entire shift, and for us, it's only just for a moment. We pray for our president, for our governor, uh, for, for Kate Dexter, our mayor, and for our civic leaders and ask God that you will help us, um, help us and unite us, that we can work together. Help us set aside things that, um, you know, maybe have petty differences when we realize that this is really a life and death matter. Bless our leaders with wisdom and insight as they um, guide us and um, help them in the discernment process. Oh God, we are so grateful again for the community that we have here. Continue to strengthen us and speak to us. May this be a time of, of creativity, a time of new birth and new growth. We lift our prayer to you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Friends, as we uh, go out into the world, um, I just want to thank you again for what, what you are doing to maintain the relationships within uh, this community of faith and extending them beyond. Um, I, I see them and they're, they're shared with me uh, you know, throughout the week. Um, I just appreciate your creativity and you'll see some of that actually in the slideshow that will follow uh, during the, the postlude here. So um, thank you for this. And, and God is truly good to uh, inspire us and will continue to inspire us to build on these relationships and, and keep uh, strong the, the bonds of faith that exist uh, between us. So um, also, this might be a time where we would, if you were all right here, I'd, I'd want to recognize uh, those who have served um, in the military as we think about um, uh, the, the, those who served and um, gave their lives in defense of freedom uh, over this Memorial Day. So I want to thank you for your service um, and in, invite you to remember uh, those who have gone before us, uh, those who have served certainly in the military and, and gave their lives, but also our loved ones. Uh, may we remember, uh, remember them this Memorial Day weekend and give thanks to God for their lives. So go out into the world in peace. May the blessing of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest with you this day and each day. Amen.